This video is going to show you how to model a building feature wall using X generative design in the 3D generative innovator role and building space planning in the concept building designer role from Katia on the 3D experience platform. We're going to start with an existing building. And the first thing we're going to do is insert a part into our product structure. Right click on the product, go down to insert 3D part, and now we'll right click properties to rename that part. We're going to copy that name, we'll delete the instance name, and now we'll rename the 3D shape that's inside of that part. Inside the part, we're going to create a sketch. The support for this sketch is going to be the surface from our building model. By selecting that surface, Katia automatically generates an external references geometrical set in the specification tree that contains a link to the original surface in our driver model. We'll make a rectangle now that extends from the upper left-hand corner down to the bottom right hand corner and we'll output that rectangle as a profile. We're going to make two more rectangles. Those are going to be output as well and they will act as boundaries for our doorways. Once both profiles have been output, we'll exit the sketch and we'll make a fill. This fill surface is going to close that first large profile curve. Now we'll split that surface using the other profile curves that have been output from our sketch. Make sure that the element to cut is the surface and not the profiles. Within the fill command, you can control which side is kept and which side is split using the other side controller. We'll rename the geometrical set, make sure that we hide any geometry that we don't want to see in X-Generative Design. We'll save this model, and then we'll go to our browser. We will search for the part that we just created, find it in the database, drag it into our X-Generative Design widget, and the part will load. Please note that this video is created before the 19X general availability release, so some of the things that you see inside X-Generative Design have slightly changed since the release date. We'll start modeling an X-Generative Design by making a divide. The divide is going to act as the number of divisions that make up our feature wall. We're going to make a boundary curve for each one of those divide patches and then do an offset of that curve using either the divide or the base surface as a support. We'll just set 90 millimeters as the value for now. And now we're going to split those divide surfaces with that offset curve. We'll make a thick surface from those split surfaces. And these will represent the slats that are going to extend out past our original flat wall. You see that I took the wrong orientation of our split surface, so I'm going to edit that feature and change the orientation. Now in the graph, I'm going to go in and start to edit my logic a little bit. I'm going to pull out the values that will control the division numbers of my surface. Those will become control parameters later on that I can modify as I explore different variations of my design. I'm also going to make a random operator. That random is going to control the offset of my parallel curves that will control the gaps between my panels. So you see now I'll change the offset value from the length of 90 millimeters to the random value. And I'll change the minimum value so that it has more variation. I'm going to copy that cluster of nodes because I want random values also to control the thickness of my slats of these thick surfaces. Now, so that these parameters are easily accessible later on, I'm going to rename them and broadcast them. The main difference between this pre-production release of X-Generative Design and 19X version 
is that in order to see the geometry in the rich client in 19x, you need to publish those thick surfaces. In this pre-production release, that step was not required. At this point, I'll save my model. And as soon as it's done, I'll go back to my rich client application, activate my assembly, and I'll do a selective refresh of the part that I was just modifying in X-Generative Design. Katia recognizes that it's been changed since the last version in my session, and it's updated the model. Now I can go back into that part and start to design using those parameters that I've defined in X-Generative Design. I'll start by changing the number of divisions in the U direction. I'll change the number of divisions in the V direction. And I'll also look at the different offset values that control the gaps between panels. I'm pretty happy with the design I've come up with here, so I'm going to save and admire my work. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post comments if you have any questions or ideas of videos you'd like to see in the future.